There we go. On this show, we like to read you a random chapter from the Bible every morning because, you know, a verse is like, uh, is like, is like a, an anthill. And a chapter is like a, uh, I don't want to say mountain because that's like a book, maybe. Maybe that's all the books. Is it like a, it's like a large hill? Like a grassy knoll? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's read a random chapter today. All righty. Three, two, one. Numbers five. All righty. Numbers five is a random chapter of the day. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, command the sons of Israel that they send away from the camp every leper and everyone having a discharge and everyone who is unclean because of a dead person. You shall send away both male and female. You should send them outside the camp so that they will not defile their camp where I dwell in their midst. The sons of Israel did so and sent them outside the camp just as Yahuwah had spoken to Moses. Thus the sons of Israel did. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the sons of Israel. When a man or woman commits any of the sins of mankind acting unfaithfully against Yahuwah that, and that person is guilty, then he shall confess with, with his then he shall confess his sins which he has committed and he shall make restitution in full for his wrong and add to it one fifth of it and give it to him who has wronged who he, who he has wronged but if the man has no relative to whom restitution may be made for the wrong the restitution which is made for the wrong must go to the to Yahuwah for the priest besides the ram of atonement by which atonement is made for him also, every contribution pertaining to the holy gifts of the sons of Israel, which they offer to the priest, shall be his. So every man's holy gifts shall be his. Whatever any, man get, or whatever any man gives to the priest, it becomes his. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, If any man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, and a man has intercourse with her, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and she is undetected, although she has defiled herself, and there is no witness against her, and she has not been caught in the act, if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, and he is jealous of his wife when she has defiled herself, or if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, and he is jealous of his wife when she has not defiled herself, the man shall then bring his wife to the priest, and shall bring as an offering for her one-tenth of an ifa ifa of barley meal, and shall not pour oil on it, nor put frankincense on it, for it is a grain offering of jealousy, a grain offering of memorial, a reminder of iniquity. Then the priest shall bring near and have her stand before Yahuwah, and the priest shall take holy water and an earthware, earthenware vessel, and he shall take some of the dust that is on the floor of the tabernacle and put it into the water. The priest shall then have the woman stand before Yahuwah and let the hair of the woman's head go loose and place the grain offering of memorial in her hands, which is the grain offering of jealousy. And in the hand of the priest, it is to be the water of bit bitterness that brings a curse. The priest shall have her take an oath and shall say to the woman, if no man has lain with you and if, ha and if you have not gone astray into uncleanness, being under the authority of your husband, be immune to this water of bitterness that brings a curse. Immune to the water. If you, however, have gone astray, being under the authority of your husband, and if you have defiled yourself, and a man other than your husband has had intercourse with you, uh, then the priest shall have the woman swear with the oath of the curse, and the priest shall say to the woman, the uh, Yahuwah will make you a curse and an oath among your people by Yahuwah's making your thigh waste away, and your abdomen swell. And this water that brings a curse shall go into your stomach and make your abdomen swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. The priest shall then write these curses on a scroll, and he shall wash them off into the water of bitterness. Then he shall make the woman drink of the water of bitterness that brings a curse, so that the water which brings a curse will go into her and cause bitterness. The priest shall take the grain offering of jealousy from the woman's hand, and he shall wave the grain offering before Yahuwah 
and bring it to the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the grain offering as it is as its memorial offering and offer it up in smoke on the altar. And afterward, he shall make the woman drink the water. When he has made her drink the water, then it shall come about if she has defiled herself and has been unfaithful to her husband, that the water which brings a curse will go into her and cause bitterness and her abdomen will swell and her thigh will waste away and the woman will become a curse among her people. But if the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, she then will be free and conceive children. This is the law of jealousy. When a wife being under the authority of her husband goes astray and defiles herself, or when a spirit of jealousy comes over a man and he is jealous of his wife, he shall then make the woman stand before Yahuwah and the priest shall apply all this law to her. Moreover, the man will be free from guilt, but that woman shall bear her guilt. All right. Is, uh, this, is, this, is, this, 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 this is one of those chapters that, get, that's get, that gets misused by the secular war, world. Because, you know, when the whole abortion argument comes around, they go, see, there's abortion in the Bible. And it's like, that didn't say abortion for, for one. Uh, like, you know, the, the curse that was on her. It was like thigh rot and, and other things. I mean, maybe even if it was abortion, uh, it's like she, she was unfaithful. And I don't, I don't think it's abortion. I don't know, though. Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that was... Uh, the, the make your abdomen swell and your thigh waste away is an, is an abortion because uh, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say that she was pregnant. It doesn't say that she lost the baby or the baby went anywhere at, at, at the end of this or the beginning of this. So um, I just say it's a, it's a curse. Um, I, you know, I'm not a woman, so I, I've never had to deal with God cursing me in this way. Uh, I think that the big thing to, to to pull from this is it's always the head of the household, right? The man, the 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 man is in charge. So you don't, you women, un, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, in our day and age, I gotta say, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, she would probably just be barren. Would be the the curse. Um, Z Sigmund Warden says, "Good morning." Um, but truly, it's up to the man if he says. Maybe I I don't know. I'm jealous. I'm feeling jealous. I'm feeling jealous. I don't I don't like the way you've uh, things have changed. Something's different. He's the head of the household. He's the one who can make that accusation. Um, it doesn't mean that he is free to go do those things either. This is just talking about when he has a spirit of jealousy. He comes before God. Comes before the church. Um, and it gets handled. It gets handled that way. The truth will come out. And, uh, and, and on another side note here to go off of this chapter here, uh, uh, you know, really the only time for a divorce is, is unfaithfulness. Um, so just because, um, you know, you don't, you don't like that. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not married, so I couldn't tell you what married, married people do. <laughs> but I thank you guys for joining me. This is the random chapter of the day. Numbers five. All right.